Okay. So first question that comes up during a year-end closed discussion is when do we close the year? Now that differs from company to company based on whether you are following a calendar year or, or your company's own fiscal year. Now the the modules that are generally closed in the GP system are accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger, payroll, inventory, and fixed assets. That's just naming the, the big six. For, for uh, the sake of uh, keeping our, our presentation concise and, and within the 30-minute time frame, we're just going to do an overview of the, the first three listed on, on this screen. In the case of accounts payable and accounts receivable, timing is everything. The year-end process is recommended to be run as close to the, the year-end as possible. Now, the reason for this is because the system goes through and it basically just looks at all the transactions that have been processed through, through that particular day. Let's say it's... Um, January 2nd, and we want to close the, the year just to make sure that all of the transactions that have been processed up through that day had, um, or prior to that day, had been recorded as 2014 transactions. Now, uh, in a perfect world, you would be able to just go in the system and run the year-end close process and everything would be honky-dory, but here we, we need to be mindful of a couple of things. If we have new transactions that we're processing in this new fiscal year that we're starting as, as of um, January 2nd in this example, we would want to make sure that we save the transactions to, to batches, but not post them yet, at least not post them until our fiscal year-end process is run. So this way, we're able to, to separate our 2014 transactions from 2015. Now, these, um, these processes are recommended because there are certain windows in, in the accounts payable and accounts receivable modules that, that are um, not date sensitive. And so they basically just take the information that's currently in the system as of that point in time and records that as as the basically the year's totals regardless of how those transactions were dated so these are some of the windows that are affected and just as recently as yesterday i had a customer who um for whatever reason didn't have their their year end close processed on a timely basis for last year so they're their accounts receivable totals were, were a bit off, and they were trying to pull the, the balances from SmartList. So there were definitely some differences in what they were expecting to see and what they got out of the system. Although we, we were able to piece together a workaround, it, it just took a little bit more time than, than they wanted to spend on it. But it's not the end of the world if you don't close on, on um, January 2nd. To, um, to close your 2014 fiscal year, but, you know, it will ensure that your balances are, are pretty close to, to what you, you process for that year. Now, one thing to mention is that these year-end close processes for AP and AR are optional. They, they are not required processes. So um, if you're heavily relying on information that's coming from SmartList or or maybe your yearly summary window for customers and vendors and also using summary reports, then maybe, yeah, you may want to close on a timely basis just to make sure your your um, sales dollar amounts or AP dollar amounts are compiled correctly. Now, how do you run this process for, for the AR and AP year-end close? These are all handled through the 
routines menu from both the uh, sales and purchasing modules. And each of those um, modules has their own menus for year-end close. Now, when you run those processes, you will want to take into consideration a couple of things. For both of those, those um, processes, these windows have um, the option of doing a fiscal year and a calendar year close. If you're lucky enough to have a fiscal calendar that's tied to the calendar year, you're pretty much just going to select the all option. <clears throat> Excuse me, select the all option and process this um, this routine as close to the year end as you can, and the corresponding fields of uh, fiscal year and calendar year closing dates will populate automatically. Now, if there are any differences in your fiscal and calendar year, you can just close the the fiscal calendar according to to your fiscal calendar. It's not going to really affect anything within the calendar year. Um, it's just going to be a matter of remembering to run these processes at their designated times. Prior to running the year and close processes, I generally recommend running a couple of reports. If I'm wanting to have some sort of uh, reference to to the data that I've that I'm closing. I want to make sure that I have a, a good starting point or a reference point. And what we're looking at here, I know it's really hard to look at because it, it's condensed, but we're looking at customer and vendor uh, balance smart lists. And all I did there was added the year-to-date um, and last year-to-date columns just to make sure that I have a snapshot of the information that is going to be transferred. So the current year information gets pushed to, to last year to date, and that last year to date kind of becomes not invisible, but it, it becomes a little bit more cumbersome to get to after the year-end close is run. So you might want to consider um, exporting this information just for, for your own purposes so you have a record of this information and it's at your fingertips in case you need to go back to it at a later point in time. Now, the GL closing procedures. This is the area that gets the most amount of questions all year long. Um, people tend to want to close their fiscal years at, at different intervals. Um, it causes a lot of um, a lot of anxiety in, in people as, you know, it sounds like a daunting task, but it, it really is a lot simpler than than you think. Now, um, a few guidelines that we've outlined here, they're just basically tips that, that we like to follow when running the year-end close process, processes for our clients. And um, one of the big ones is making sure that all the balance sheet accounts and profit and loss accounts are are tagged appropriately. Now that makes a huge impact on the year end close because the balance sheet accounts uh, tend to roll balances forward from year to year, whereas the profit and loss accounts get zeroed out and rolled into retained earnings. So that that has a, a huge impact on your year end close. So that's one of the the major items that, that we like to highlight. In addition, um, we have recommendations to to make sure your open batches are, are posted. Um, if you have any um, audit adjustments, if they're available, you can go ahead and post them. If they're not available, it, it's quite all right. They can be posted at a later date. Um, we also recommend year-end updates to be run if um, if you're running the payroll modules. And I know that this is in the middle of the list, but make a backup. Actually, you should make a backup uh, prior to running any of these processes, as you will want to have a good fallback position in, in the event that 
some of the data um, doesn't look right, or worse yet, you know, the system stalls and um, you have to restore back to to a good starting point. So it's always a good idea to have a backup prior to starting any of these processes. In addition, we we also recommend running trial balance reports and as well as financial statements. And of course, you'll you'll be required to set up your new fiscal year prior to moving forward with the close. So what we wanted to, to outline here are are the processes again of of making sure that you you have the right settings set to your GL accounts. In addition, um, we'd like to have you review your open batches. In this case, we're looking at a master posting window. The great thing about this master posting window is that you can look at all your your open batches in one screen or merely just focus on one one particular series of batches and the financial batches would be the well our focus in in the year-end close um, procedures. If you have any year-end close journal entries, um, we can um, certainly have them posted at this time. If not, we could do it later. Um, just as a reminder here, the year-end payroll updates they can be downloaded from the Microsoft. Um, business solution site. Now you would need to be current on your enhancement plan and if you're not current for whatever reason you can always contact David Gersten to discuss on how to how to be how to bring your your status in, into compliance with the um, Microsoft uh, terms and conditions. And here's our reminder for taking a backup. And generally, the the backups are taken in SQL Server Management Studio. At least that's the easier way to go about it. Unfortunately, you would want to get your IT department involved. If um, you don't have an IT department, um, we'd be glad to help and take the backups for you. For the most part, it, it just takes probably no longer than 10 minutes to take a backup. So it's well worth it, and it's always a good idea, again, so that you have a good position to fall back to in the event that you get undesirable results. And just to touch on some of the reports again, um, a detailed GL trial balance is always a Good idea. And here in the in the window, we're looking at a summary um, trial balance. But you know, it's just a matter of of having the the balances available, so you have some form of reference. I have yet to see any scenarios where the balances do not match uh, before and after the year end close. But some people just like to have that that sense of security and having those numbers in front of them so when they run the close, they, they have certainty that, that things remain the same. And you can also run your financial reports out of FRX or Management Reporter, depending on, on the um, version of GP that you're currently using. Your new fiscal year will definitely need to be set up prior to running your year-end close, since we're effectively going to roll balances from your old year to your new year. And these um, processes will not run without it, so it, it's always a, a good thing to, to remember to do it. That way you don't have to stop and take the side step to do, do your setups. And last but not least, um, we have the year-end close process. Now, this is kind of a dangerous window. You have the year-end close button that that's there, and 
when you run the urine close, sometimes it's going to take a little bit of time. And the reason it takes time to run is because the system is going through and it's clearing out um, data from the open tables and pushing it over to the history tables. So while that process is running, depends on the volume of your transactions, but it can take a little while to run. So please be patient with the process as it's going to take as long as it's going to need. In some cases, I, I've seen it run um, upwards of an hour, but that's in, in a large implementation uh, environment. So hopefully that's not the case for you, but in the event that, that things are moving a little slow, please be patient. As you do, want, do not want to pull the plug on a process, it becomes real sticky trying to trying to clean that process up. So here's a snapshot of some of the processes that that happen while the urine close process is running. I already mentioned the move from open to historical tables, but it, all of this is, is being done um, by the system in the back end, and all you really see on on your side is that um, you're in closed window. So um, once the processes are finished, you will have the option of printing a year in close report. Now that year in close report can only be generated during this year in close process. So you will want to print it, whether it is to the screen or to the printer. And in some circumstances, it, it might be a lengthy report depending on, on the GL accounts or the number of GL accounts that you use in your system. But um, the information there is valuable as it will effectively give you the, the amount of your, of your P&L for the year that's going to move to retain earnings. And generally, that should match your income statement for the year. So it's a good check figure to, to look at. So that, that's the gist of the year-end close process. Um, we wanted to include some FAQs um, since these are some of the, the bigger questions that come up when, when the year-end close process is discussed. Now, one of the bigger questions, do I have to close the fiscal year before the first day of the next fiscal year? Absolutely not. It doesn't even have to be close to, to the end of the fiscal year, but um, generally we recommend that you do it on a timely basis since your year, excuse me, since your beginning balances for the new year will not appear on your trial balance reports or balance sheets until that fiscal year is closed. Additionally, here, uh, can I make adjusting entries after I close the year? Absolutely. You can make journal entries to the most recently closed year, and that's um, that's generally what what most people need to do. There are some some circumstances where you may want to post to a previously closed year. That is not an option for for most clients, since um, actually since uh, GP 2013 R2, I believe that's the first version that allows you to reopen a closed year. I have yet to use that feature, but um, it is an option on the newer installs of GP 2013 at least from the R2 release going forward. And here's one of the, the bigger uh, support items that, that comes up after the year-end close processes. After I performed the year-end close routine, beginning balances were brought forward for some of my sales and expense accounts. Um, all of this is relating to the posting options not being not being corrected um, up front, and it's not the end of the world. It, it could definitely be fixed, but it it does require some some patience to go through and 
uh, zero out the balance within or insert the, the beginning balance into the the beginning balances for, for the new year. So it does take a little bit of, of effort, and we're glad to help in, in the event that you run into the scenario. Um, this is just a reference to um, to correcting the issue that, that I just mentioned. Um, more importantly, uh, we have links here for you to to reference when you're running the year-end close process. Now, by no no stretch of the imagination is it just going to be a matter of clicking next, next, next. There there is going to be some uh, there are going to be some processes that you'll want to read through carefully, and this is um, or actually all of these links are, are going to help you in doing your close, whether it's for payroll, fixed assets, accounts receivable, general ledger. These are all helpful articles that are provided by Microsoft.